Games Workshop sent me this Leviathan Ivan box to have a look at. <laughs> the look on your face. Could you imagine if they sponsored me? Their marketing exec would be sacked on the spot. This video is actually sponsored by Frozen and I'll be using their Sonic Mini 8KS to compare files that were released well over a month prior to launch to the official models. It's been a while since I've built plastic models, but one thing to remember is mold lines. 3D printed models don't have any mold lines to clean up and are generally good to go after the supports are taken off and the models are cured. This process took a while. I'm excited to see how some of these creations compare to the official models. The humble Neurogaunt is a new unit, an even lesser organism of a gaunt and almost at the bottom of the food chain, only above the tiny rippers. The plastic models from the box were actually really easy to put together with only two pieces. I used the standard plastic glue that I've had for over two years because it's been almost that long since I built the plastic model from G-Dubs. This sculpt is from, in my opinion, the best bug creator right now. His models are so detailed and I've covered them many times before with good reason. If there was one army of models to make you consider getting a 3D printer, Tyranids are the perfect army to print. I used a wash and cure station from Frozen that they sent me a while back to prepare my resin models for the next steps. And I can say that it's held up very well to my demands of printing, which is two or three plates worth of models every day. I scraped the models off the plate with the scraper that comes with all 3D printers. Some people even use flex plates, which are magnetic and make it easier, but I like using the scraper because with the Sonic Mini 8KS, its plate has this design on it that creates a really strong bond between the raft and the plate. After washing the models is in my experience the best time to take off supports. A lot of people will use some hot water to help with removing the supports, but these creators supports come off smooth without any further steps. Unlike removing the models from the sprue, you don't need to use cutters for supports unless they are really beefy. Curing the models is easy in the curing station because you normally have to let the alcohol evaporate off the model before you can cure it. But this station has a fan function to try the model for you before it auto cures them for five minutes. The longer I've been in this hobby and with the amount that I print, these quality of life things are very important to me. To build the resin models, you need to use super glue. I use Gorilla Glue Gel because I find it's been the most consistent for me for strength and working time. That being said, I will be looking at alternatives at some point in the future. This is where the plastic model maybe has an edge because the resin model comes in a lot of different pieces, but it has to be mentioned that the creator has sorted this issue out with the next model that we will be looking at. But here are the two models side by side. There's obvious differences between the two and that's because they were modeled after the teaser video and released way before we even knew these were going to be a thing. The next models I'm going to compare is the Termagons, which I'll admit I don't really keep up to date with rumors etc. But where are Hormagons this edition? Have they been devoured by the hive to create new biomass? The plastic Termagons come in four different pieces and are straightforward enough to put together. Although when building, I noticed one of my guns was broken on the sprue. Awesome, but the resin ones that have been done by the creator have been updated with four or five new poses that you can just print as a whole model, which obviously saves a lot of time. It's not like you can really add any uniqueness to the plastic poses, so this is a big win in my book. The 3D printed model has a lot of extra details to it, and that's down to a combination of the immense talent by the creator and the 22 microns resolution of the Sonic Mini 8KS. There is a model lurking amongst these sprues, which is another brand new model to the NIDS line, and that is the Fawn Ryan Leaper. There are three different poses with the plastic version, and they come in a few different pieces. Mold lines just aren't for me. I don't know how you get enjoyment out of this part of the hobby. The resin version only has one pose for now, but again, we are talking about a sculpt that was out over a month before the box. The telltale sign of this creator sculpts are the highly detailed shitting. I just think 
it's more lore appropriate, making the Neds look like an actual threat. It also comes in a few pieces, and although there's no instructions included, they aren't really needed. I find it easy enough to look at the final render and work out what goes where. The Terranid Prime, or Shrike as I know it as, was a awesome reveal, and it made me optimistic that winged warriors would grace the tabletop again. So far, it hasn't been announced, but hopefully a potato quality photo comes out soon so I can field a complete winged bugged army. The plastic model building process was actually more involved than I thought it would be, with the limitations of injection mode and showing, with the poor Prime's nugging, needing glued on. The resin model is broken into similar pieces and was simple enough to put together with no instructions. The quality side by side is very interesting and if I had a darker grey resin I think it would be even easier to directly compare. The model that I least expected yet was the most excited for was the Screamer Killer. Long gone are the days of it looking goofy and this is where the two sculpts differ into personal preference. The G-Dub sculpt has quite a lot of parts to go together and I don't know about that head. I know why it's like that, but the resin model just, well, no pun intended, screams killer to me. It was easier to put together in my opinion, and the head just looks way better. The creator does really amazing carnifex like models that really just adds more uniqueness to the nids. I think it's time to look at some other creators for bugs and what they managed to come up with for the new models in the range. Starting with the Nero Tyrant, Magos Castia Theta 9 has the best instructions available today and is a testament to the hobby. Not only did they split up the model to make it easier to print for smaller printers, but they also added in extra details if you wanted something more like the Raphael trailer. I went with this lightning surrounded version because it just looks so cool, especially beside the plastic version which comes in a few different pieces as per usual. The resin model is the first in this video that is a paid file and it only cost $10. The Psychophage had me confused when it was shown in the release trailer on what it would be for, but I have to hand it to them, the model looks sick. It comes in two halves for the plastic version and my favorite part about it is the mouth. Now that is terrifying for the humans of the grim dark. The resin model isn't split in the two but instead is like split differently with the head and the body coming separate. This is another paid for file that costs six dollars and unfortunately I ran out of time to ask the creator if they wanted to be named in the video and it's a real shame because I also used another one of their sculpts for the next model which is the new Barb Gaunt. Now I wasn't sure about these but looking at them more I like them. It's interesting to see how 10th edition is shaping nids into a shouldn't focused army with all these new models which may or may not be a good thing but only time will tell. The resin model cost five dollars and like the plastic version was really easy to put together. This same creator has quite a few of the newer bugs for offer and I'm excited to see what else they bring out. I've covered the nits portion of the box because it's what I was more excited to see but I have found and almost printed off the full space ring side of it and they are some amazing sculpts for it. Leave a comment down below on if you want me to do this video but for the marines and also let me know what you think of the comparison between the plastic and the resin sculpt. If you want to support the channel more consider becoming a Patreon or YouTube member and joining possibly the best discord in the universe. But more importantly you should watch this video next because I started my long path into 3D printing an entire Titan Legion and it's not smooth sailing. As always I want to give a big thanks to my Patreons and members without you I couldn't do these types of videos and I'll always be eternally grateful for you all. I'll see you all on the Discord.